Welcome to the Navigating Cancer Together podcast. My name is Talaya Dindi. I am a 10-year cancer thriver, cancer doula, and owner of On the Other Side. I use my experience to help others get on the other side of cancer. This podcast is about sharing stories, resources, and information about all things related to cancer and wellness. I interview guests from all walks of life who are living with cancer, caregivers, and those who made it on the other side. Also, I talk with organizations, healthcare professionals, and experts in the health and wellness spaces who offer complimentary and integrative care. Join me. We are in this together. Hello, and welcome to Navigating Cancer Together. I am your host, Talaya Dindi. Today, our special guest is Crystal Grinier. Crystal is an Idaho girl living in a North Dakota world. She is a 50 plus married mom to two beautiful adult daughters. She holds a BA in communications and business and later a master's in sports management, providing many employment opportunities that include sales, marketing, PR, administration, coaching, management, and fundraising efforts. Her long-standing passion for health and fitness created a sanctuary of safety as a fitness instructor and personal trainer, only to be recently challenged with shifts into an online holistic health coaching business and now an aspiring writer of the written word to heal. Her writing has been featured in Authority Magazine interview series entitled, I Survived Cancer and Here's How I Did It. She has a local newspaper column, Healing Through Conversations, and she is a published author in a new collaborative chapter book called Feisty, which is coming out January 2022. Crystal, thank you so much for joining us today and welcome. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you taking the time to um, let me be a person on your podcast. So thank you. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to have you. So Crystal, let's just get started. Please tell us a little bit about you and um, your background. Um, Well, I, as you've said, I live in North Dakota. I'm originally from Idaho. And um, I... I'm a mom to two adult daughters and um, what, what else would you like to know? Like what, what, what more specifically would you like to know versus the. So basically um, we'll just go to the first question. How does a healthy fitness instructor and trainer come to find a breast cancer diagnosis? So please share with us as, as, as in much detail as you would like about your cancer journey. Oh, most definitely. Um, so for me, I had my first hip replacement in June of 2017. And a couple months later, I noticed a lump in my right armpit. Like it was movable. It was big and it was, it was a lump and it wasn't on my left side. So being aware of my body as an instructor and a trainer, um, I knew I should get it checked out. So upon going to my PA and doing a, um, um, ultrasound and a biopsy, the results came back as invasive ductal carcinoma, AKA breast cancer. Um, so that was in August of 2017 that I found the lump. And then I was diagnosed in October. And then in December, um, the, some breast tissue was removed on the right side and I had nine lymph nodes removed on my right side. Eight of them did have cancer and two of them were still lighting up in a PET scan with cancer right up below my shoulder blade. Um, We were sent to Mayo in Minnesota and they were trying to decide, well, should we go back in and take those lymph nodes out or should we try to kill them with chemotherapy? Um, Me being a natural holistic practitioner and coach, um, I just, I did not want to put the chemotherapy into my body, put that poison in there, but 
I wasn't ready to go under the knife again and have to deal with all the drain tubes and all that stuff. So I opted for chemotherapy and um, I went through the red devil, as you call it, for eight weeks and then 12 mm -hmm. weeks of Paxol. And then I had 28 rounds of radiation. So that was my treatment mm -hmm. um, after being diagnosed with cancer. Wow. And so you happened to be going in for a, a surgery for hip replacement, and then that eventually led to a cancer diagnosis. Well, the hip replacement, no, the hip replacement was because I, my hips were bad. Like I've been, you know, in fitness for years and arthritis runs in our family. So I had the hip replaced because I wanted to be more mobile and more functional in obviously my fitness instruction. And then in my personal workouts with myself, skiing, hiking, you know, all the things that I like to do without the pain and the popping. And then I, I thought, I thought I, the lump came from the surgery, you know, like the That was my hip. question. Yeah, that was my question. Yes. yes, I understand the point of a hip replacement. Yeah, it just sounded like the way you described it in the process of that, that is what led you to the lump. It, yeah. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah. Okay. That is, wow, that's really interesting um, how you started there and it kind of led to you discovering that you had breast cancer. I know. Wow. It's, uh, it's kind of interesting how it all kind of flowed together, you mm -hmm. know, a little bit of time. Because like I said, I thought it was swollen. I thought it was limp swelling from the surgery is what I was thinking it was until it was obviously diagnosed otherwise. Yes, so. that's the question that I was asking and trying to get to, because um, I think that's important for the audience to know is that you may not be um, specifically getting a screening for cancer, but you can find it in other ways and in other situations. So oh, definitely. that was my point of asking that question. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank uh -huh. you. I was glad I was able to clarify a little bit. All right. And so genetic specialists estimate that five to 10% of cancers diagnosed are linked to an inherited faulty gene. So with that being said, Crystal, what do you feel brought cancer as a message to you? For me, three words come into my mind and I'll elaborate a little bit on those. Stop, look, and listen. So Cancer as a message to me, it made me stop and look at my past and what I was dealing with. Grief was a, a huge benefactor. Um, never processing that with death in my family. Um, emotional stuffing, like being the oldest child in a family dynamic of a step family, not an ideal step family situation. I dealt with a lot of family dynamics in a negative way, um, bad decisions on my part, um, personally, physically, mentally. Um, so just stopping and looking at my past and like, okay, what did I do to get here? Like what brought me to this place of cancer popping up to tell me something? Mm -hmm. um, looking again, looking into those, like, okay, I never processed my grief from my dad and my sister. And and none of us did in the family, you know, and then you start to research things and look at things and, and it all kind of ties together a little bit, like how, because you always think it's hereditary. Well, it doesn't run in my family. Okay. I work out all the time. I eat pretty good because obviously I'm a fitness instructor. I mean, I walk the talk or I talk mm -hmm. the walk, you know, mm -hmm. I've been doing it for years. Um, so stopping looking and then listening. So like, okay, so I can't change my past, but I can find ways to remedy what has come from that. Mm -hmm. The repercussions that led to this cancer diagnosis. So that's where I come up with stop, look and listen when cancer came to me as a slap in the face. Like I need to change something else up. I need to be more aware of something else that's there that I have not been addressing. I've been surface fixing things. I, in a way, mm -hmm. with food, exercise, you know? So yes. I had to dive deeper into that. That makes sense. And that's a great way to describe it because you don't have a choice but to stop. 
and look. And hopefully you will take the time to listen um, and see what what really needs to be changed or improved in your whole entire life. So thank you for sharing that with us. Sure, definitely. And so, Crystal, what holistic modalities did you practice during your cancer treatments? Okay, so for me, I um, sought out a, um, actually a massage therapist that specialized in lymph lymph massage, which I did during my chemotherapy treatments, which was, I think, super beneficial. Just moving that chemo around where it needed to go, I think, to do its thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Chiropractic care has always been in my life. I go once a month for that. Yoga, I am a yoga instructor. So I was trying to daily get up and if I can only do five minutes of yoga, 10 minutes, whatever that is, meditation was Mm -hmm. a huge helper mentally for me. Um, I found EFT tapping is awesome. Um, And I actually advocate that wholeheartedly. Um, Group therapy, group therapy, you know, just talking, getting support, I think from others that are going through what I was going through, trying to um, take advice from, you know, other people, other women that were going through breast cancer. Um, and then eating healthy, trying to, you know, take the right supplements and make healthy food choices. As you know, when you go through chemo, your food preferences are different. Yes. And I kind of was more comfort food for me, I think, you know, like I just, Mm -hmm. you just wanted to be comforted. And so you would eat, I didn't really worry about the calories too much. I just kind of worried about like eating. I didn't really lose my appetite. Like I know some women do when they go Mm -hmm. through chemotherapy, Um, so yeah, just, just making, being more aware of my food choices and my supplements and my vitamins and things like that. Okay. Walking when I could, going outside in nature, walking. That was a big Mm -hmm. one too. Oh yeah. Walking was huge for me. And I, I love to walk to this day. I always Mm -hmm. have. And I found that for me, like walking, it just took a lot of the stress away. I was able to just kind of be in that moment and um, it was very therapeutic and healing for me also. It's a, it's a form of meditation, really, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, that's which, right. Which I like sometimes better than trying to sit and be still because I can't do it very long <laughs> still to this day. So, yeah. yeah, I think a lot of people struggle with that, you know, just being still because we're told that we should always be doing something. And so um, for some people, I can see where that would be a challenge of just sitting still and just being in that moment. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Crystal, can you share your emotional pillars of healing and how they will help others that um, have been diagnosed with cancer? Oh, definitely. So this is a new path that I took, that I started to walk on about a year ago. Um, and where the coaching and the consulting is coming into play. So, and as we talked about before, emotional stuffing was a huge benefactor, I believe, in me cultivating my cancer or making it grow to to finding it. Um, The first one is nourishing your emotions or our emotions. So how are we feeding them? Are we, and it could be with food, you know, you could be Mm -hmm. overstuffing, you could be starving, um, what other mechanisms are we using? Are we making bad food choices? Are we consuming a lot of alcohol or are we, you know, what other lifestyle things are we doing that are not balancing our emotions? Um, Again, like I said, food and, and just a few examples of what other nourishment mechanisms could be besides food. Um, The second pillar is processing or moving our emotions. So how are we taking that nourishment, hopefully of balance Mm -hmm. and moving? So just like we talked about through yoga, meditation, walking, exercise, other types of fitness. Um, Again, the, the chiropractic care, the massage, the other holistic modalities that help you move and process those emotions. Um, 
having a choice, putting a name to the emotion. What are you feeling with that emotion? You know, and how, you, how can you change that feeling once you have named the emotion? You know, we could go deeper into that, but that's just kind of a surface description. Mm -hmm. And then moving into the third pillar is alchemizing our emotions or transforming. So once you're nourishing on that balanced level and you are processing them, what comes out on the other side? Mm -hmm. Are you, are you taking what you've learned and using it to help another person to maybe, um, um, help with a charity or a donation, or what are you using to help yourself and maybe others that mm -hmm. are in the same place as you, um, again, finding that awareness creating that awareness. So you're getting that transformation of awareness and knowing that you have a choice with your emotions instead of pushing them down, confronting them and um, having the opportunity to, to put a name on it, put a feeling to it and then um, transform it into something positive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. So those are the three pillars that I am currently working with and very um, strongly passionate about advocating in some way. Great. So, yeah. And so Crystal, when you work with someone, how do you, what does that look like? What are, you know, is it um, <clears throat> via Zoom? How, how would one go about working with you and implementing these pillars? Well, currently I, I've been trying, I've been, moving into an online holistic coaching role, mm -hmm. but I've, I'm transitioning a little bit. I'm taking a different path with that. Um, as you've talked about in my bio, I have turned to the written word as mm -hmm. a way to heal. Um, and that's kind of a main, I, I like that place where I'm at with the, the written word. And um, I want to continue online and hopefully consult in some way, maybe provide a workshop, or I actually have a summit coming up that I would like to talk about a little bit. Um, and uh, retreats, maybe have some retreats in the future where we we go and we come together and we work on emotional health. Um, it could be through maybe some type of art form, drawing, painting. We could even do this online. I, I'm still kind of like trying to put it together. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. these are just brainstorming things that I'm throwing out, but, um, okay. yes. So hopefully in the next month or two, I'll have a little bit more clarification on what that entails. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I will share my social media places to find me to see those things as they, mm -hmm. um, transpire. And come that about. sounds good. Sounds yeah. great. And we will do that um, before we wrap up here today. We'll make sure that the audience yes. knows where to find you. And I will also put it in the list of notes. So as a breast cancer survivor, Crystal, what five things resonated with you that you would like to share with the audience? Okay. Now, these are five things that I shared in that Authority Magazine article that I wrote. And so I'm just going to reiterate them to you because I feel that they're very important. So number one, cancer is just a moment in time. When you're in the thick of all of it, you just need to be present in your moment of living. Instead of counting how many more treatments you have, you want to focus on one thing that you can do on that day at that time. And it's going to depend on how you feel. So can I go for a walk today? Can I practice yoga or meditation for five minutes? So taking your cancer journey one day at a time will bring you peace and a positive focus on healing. Number two, accept help from others. Now, to be honest, I struggled with this one. I was kind of a loner in my journey and I wish I would have done this a little bit more. So to me, this is an important thing to do. So find a support group, be it one person or many, um, finding someone that you're comfortable with that you that you can embrace that it has gone through what you've gone through makes it that much easier because you guys can share that we can share that mutual understanding mm -hmm. researching books or articles from others who have survived cancer 
can be uplifting and instill optimism during your cancer experience. Finding someone who resonates you with their written word and their shared message can really boost your morale towards beating your cancer or surviving after your cancer diagnosis. Number three, this is the most important, release your emotion. If you wanna cry, cuss, throw things in the moment of feeling sorry for yourself or anger, do it. I find myself, or I found myself in the shower on many occasions, just shedding tears, asking myself, why me, why me, why me? Um, releasing those emotions helps keep you sane and more importantly, lets you surrender to receive gifts of grace and a stronger connection to a limitless, limitless flow of self-love, which is something I have seriously cultivated in the past year, is learning how to love myself internally and not look for external affection and happiness. Mm -hmm. The fourth thing is to be attentive to your body, your mind, and your soul. You need to feed all those places of well-being to fight against your cancer or you know, to continue surviving too after your mm -hmm. cancer diagnosis. Research again to find that cancer massage therapist and a relatable chiropractor. Um, check in daily to see how you feel, to invite movement in whatever capacity that is for you. Journaling, that's another thing we forgot to talk about. Meditating, practice breathing. There's breathing mm -hmm. exercises. Just sitting and breathing mm -hmm. is just a huge helper to just yes. kind of like let you chill and just be okay and be present in your moment. Mm -hmm. Keep your immune system strong with healthy food choices, natural supplements, and or vitamins. Daily steps to reclaim your health so you can restore it to a new healthier you is so empowering. Mm -hmm. Number five, hold self-compassion. We all need and want different comforts during our cancer journey. And in order to stay strong to fight, you have to soften to heal. Take it one day at a time. Communicate to yourself positive words of encouragement that you will get through this stay focused and keep your eye on the prize. And that's to be cancer free forever. Mm -hmm. All of those very, very great um, advice. And Thank they're you. all things that you've mentioned that are very doable. Um, I think, you know, for some of those things, it will take the practice of just being more mindful, um, but they're all really great things that can be implemented you know, right away, quite frankly. So thank you for sharing those. You're welcome. And the next thing I want to go into, Crystal, is your summit, um, which I had the pleasure and thank you for um, inviting me, um, was to be a part of your summit. So tell the audience a little bit about your summit and what that's all about. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. It's been, it's been a lot of work. Um, I'm in the process of interviewing um, 15 speakers to talk about cancer and or chronic illness. And um, it's a female chronic illness and it's gonna be, a, it's a workshop and it's alchemizing our emotions. So the summit's gonna span out through three months. So January through March, um, the first month is going to be a season with nourishing our emotions. The second month, February is going to be processing and moving through our emotions. And the third season, March, will be um, alchemizing our emotions. And in each of those seasons, I have five um, speakers or episodes um, that are going to speak on, they're going to fall into one of those places. So each speakers, the speakers that I'm interviewing are going to fall into one, two, or three. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm super excited. So for example, January, I think we're going to start January 8th is going to be the, the launch date of it. And so there'll be promotional windows and all that. And, and again, you can find all this information out more clearly on my social media pages, which I'll share with you. Um, so one week we'll have two speakers. The second week we'll have two speakers. And then the third week we'll have one speaker. So it, I've kind of changed it up a little bit to have two, four, five, like that through January, February, March. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so the sub is just still following along the lines of my emotional pillars and how I want to grow my business through that, through the summit. And, um, and then I'll, we'll be creating something to help others with the summit and with the content and um, reach out and want to share that with everyone that I can. 
Okay, that sounds wonderful. And um, before we go, is there anything else that you would like to add about your summit, the work that you do, your writing, any of those things that you want to elaborate on a little bit more? Mm. Just that I know I have a message and I know I have a passion to share that message, to help heal others. And the main focus for me or client or avatar, women over 40 that are struggling with chronic illness. Um, and that's me and that's you. And, and I want people, I want to be able to share that message of healing. And I, I, and I want that place and that space to be open for when I'm ready to share that. Okay. That's, that's what I'm asking for right now is just to, um, be open to looking at my pages and just seeing what, what comes out from my fruition of creation right now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I'm creative, I'm compassionate and I love to communicate. And those three things are the, the bottom of my, their foundation of my pillars. So, okay, great. So yeah, Thank that's, you. that's, that's, that's where I'm at. I just want, I just want people to be open to accepting and receiving what I'm going to offer. Okay. That happens. That's, that's great. Absolutely. And I think we all could, you know, use help with working through our emotions and things like that. That's one thing that I'm really big on. And it's something that people struggle with, you know, um, and I think it's just because of so many messages and signals that we get in our day to day lives and in society as a whole. It, it's just one of those things where no one has really said, you know, this is how <laughs> yeah. you, you deal with certain things. And so really we're taught to just be strong, you know, and to just deal with it. So um, any help that you, that I can provide and other folks out there, I think it just makes the world that much better and it helps people um, struggle less. So I agree. Mm -hmm. And if we can find channels and ways to communicate that where they feel comfortable taking that invitation mm -hmm. you know absolutely and that's another um thing that we you and i are cultivating all the time i think so mm -hmm. absolutely and so crystal before i wrap up i like to ask all of my guests these two questions and the first one is <laughs> what is something that you've learned in life that you would like to share with the audience oh for me, I, I touched on this a little bit ago, not to keep reaching, trying to take action to make myself happy. I'm, I have learned to be present in my moment, go with the flow and accept my love internally. That that's been a huge, a huge thing for me because I was constantly seeking outside for happiness and I was never happy in a job and jumping around or, you know, not happy in this relationship or just constantly like out there looking. So mm -hmm. going inside and just being present. That is great advice. And I'm sure it will resonate with a lot of people. I hope so. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. The second question is, what is next for you besides your summit that's coming up? Um, next for me. Okay. I want to continue writing into the new year. I don't know what that's going to entail yet. Um, I want to hopefully take this summit and move it into a book. So that's kind of my plan of action that's coming up for me. And then again, get clarity on what to share online, like how to, how to grow my business and find that clarity and that path. So I'm helping others and I have a clear vision of what that is. Okay. Wonderful. And so Crystal, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for your time. And then also I would like to thank you for, you know, sharing 
more information and sharing your wisdom about, you know, working through your emotions and your uh, three emotional pillars of healing. I think that is very helpful for the audience. And before we go, if people have questions for you, they want to connect with you and learn more about the work that you're doing, where can they find you? Um, I have a Facebook page and a Facebook group currently, Reclaim to Restore. And then the group, it's a private group, so you have to answer a few questions. Um, there's over 100 women of us in there that have obviously dealt with cancer or chronic illness. Um, Reclaim to Restore with Crystal. Instagram, Reclaim to Restore. And then email, Reclaim to Restore at gmail.com. And um, hopefully a website landing page will come in the future. I'm just, I'm still working on that, so. Okay, wonderful. And I think the um, social media pages that you mentioned um, will definitely give people a good idea of what you're working on and what you do. So I will share that with the audience in the listen notes as well. And um, again, thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure talking with you. And thank you for the work that you do by taking your experience with cancer and using it to help other people. Oh, well, thank you so much, Tyler. You're welcome. I appreciate welcome. it. Absolutely. I appreciate you giving the time to um, be here to share. So thank Absolutely. you so much. You're very welcome. And it's my pleasure to have you, Crystal. And I'm really excited and looking forward to how the summit turns out. So when you get all that information together, please send that my way. And I will share that as well. Oh, definitely. And then also the summit will... Um, we'll have it out there. Like if, if we are, if we miss the window when it starts, it'll be out there for people to access it. And we'll have, we'll have links for that as well. All right. Wonderful. So when this episode is released, I will make sure I have that information for people to go back and check it out. Sounds good. Thank you so much. All right. I want to give a shout out to the listeners. Thank you so much for joining us today. That is it for this Wednesday. And until next time, let's keep navigating cancer together. Take care. Thanks for listening to this episode of Navigating Cancer Together. I hope you enjoyed it. Please be sure to subscribe. And if you appreciate the show, drop a positive rating and review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. For notes from the show, visit ontheotherside.life and check out the podcast section. After you check out the show notes, head over to my gift shop and show yourself or someone special in your life some love with gifts of encouragement, hope, and positive affirmations. I would love it if you joined us for the next episode. Talk to you soon.